Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation. This is the last uh, show of the year 2015. Again, live from Beverly Thrills, California. And I swear, as God is my witness, just as I started the show 30 seconds ago, a tree chipper has fired up outside my window. Yes, a tree chipper has fired up outside my window. The illegal aliens are busily at work today doing what they do best, which is use leaf blowers and tree chippers. And there's nothing I can do about it. So if you hear the sound of a tree chipper, you will know it is driving me as crazy as you. Is it coming through the mic yet, Robert? Oh, good. So it's only me being disturbed by it. Well, here's the show of the year. What's the worst thing Obama did in 2015? What was the worst thing Obama did in 2015, and what do you fear he's going to do to you and to America, the psychopath? The psychopath, what's the psycho going to do in 2016? We already know that he printed up, against the law, hundreds of thousands of work permits in violation of federal statutes to give them out to foreigners slated for deportation. He is a one-man band with no opposition from the vermin in the media, and certainly no opposition from the puppet Republican government that doesn't exist. So what do you fear the lunatic is going to do in 2016, since there's no one to stop him? And what was your favorite moment from the Savage Nation this year? Do you have one? What would you like this show to do for you next year? What, in your opinion, was the best or worst story of the year? Was it Ferguson, Missouri, being funded by George Soros, burning to the ground because of Eric Holder, Barack Obama, and Al Sharpton egging on the street crowds? Was it the refugees from Syria? Was it the Assyrians being overrun and fighting back? Was it the rape manual put out by uh, the Hitlers in a headscarf called uh, ISIS? How has this year changed you? Has anything happened in your life from the news? It's rattling all of America. It's rattling all of America. We know that the country is far worse today than it was before the lunatic took over. But it, it got even magnified this year. And who do you think or what division of America's government has been most damaged by Obama's insanity this year? Has it been the military? Has it been national security? Has it been the economy? Has it been your personal freedom? This is the Savage Nation. We're open for business. If you want to get on the last show of the year, the phone number is 855-400-7282. 855-400-SAVAGE. Before I take your calls, which are lining up like crazy, I decided to come in today, the last day of the year. I couldn't leave you hanging there waiting for the magic voice to come back. Obama goes on a liberal psycho's uh show. Jerry Seinfeld, as you well know, is Larry David Stooge. Larry David, as you well know, is an America-hating, anti-American. There's no words I have for the Larry Davids of the world. There's no words I have for the liberal Hollywood clique. There's no words I have for them other than say liberal Hollywood clique. It says enough. Jerry Seinfeld is a creation of Larry David, who is the mastermind of all things evil amongst the liberal community, in my opinion. If George Soros was a comedian, he'd be Larry David. If Larry David was smarter than he is, he'd be George Soros. He would just trade currencies against societies to try to destroy them. And so while Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld destroy a society with dirty jokes and filthy attacks upon everything of value in the country, George Soros does it more directly by trading against the currencies of the nations. But they're one of the same. They're cut from the same uh, ice cream brick same type i went to school with many of these people i know how they th well i would say think but that's the wrong word 
They're purely reactive hypocrites, every last one of them. And they're destroying America and the world. So in the following clip, here is the President of the United States of America, mind you. He goes on a comedian's show, and he tells Jerry Seinfeld, who's Larry David's, um, I don't know what he is, that many world leaders are crazy or insane. Listen to clip one. How many world leaders do you think are just completely out of their mind? A pretty sizable percentage. <laughs> well, and, and, and part of what happens is these guys, uh, I think the longer they stay in office, the, the more likely that is to happen. Of course. Right? They lose it. Yeah. I mean, they you lose. just, at yeah. a certain yes. point, your feet yes. hurt and you're having trouble peeing. And <laughs> you have absolute power. I've always thought Jerry Seinfeld was a low life, lowest of the low, a man who got very rich based on very little talent, a puppet of Larry, Larry, whatever his name is, Larry David, Larry David's uh, anti-American strains. And this has hit a new low for Jerry Seinfeld, but it's actually a new low for the White House, which has already debased itself. Barack Obama has taken the White House to new lows. Each day it's a new low. And he goes last night on this guy's show, on a crackle coffee clutch, whatever that may be, in a show of some kind. And then he's asked in the next clip about uh, sports and politics. To him, it's all a joke. Clip two, please. What sport is politics? That's a, that was a good question. It's probably most like football. Football. Yeah, because mm. a lot of players... A lot of specialization, a lot of right. a lot of hitting, a lot of attrition, a lot of attrition. Um, mm -hmm. But then every once in a while, you'll see an opening. Uh -huh. Right. So, mm -hmm. so you're gonna be, you know, you you hit the line, you get one yard. Right. You try a play, you get sacked. Now it's like third and fifteen. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, mm -hmm. you have to punt a lot. But right. but every once in a while, you'll see a hole, and then there's open field. Mm, Jerry, you did such a good job. You must be making your mother and father proud in Brooklyn. Your ancestors must be turning over in their grave that you would prostitute yourself like this. But I suppose, Jerry, that they're used to it by now. It's a sad thing for me to have to say these things. I don't take any pleasure in it. But how long ago was it that a very wise man gave a speech before the Commonwealth Club in which he said, Beware the government media complex? Well, I'm the man who gave that speech in 1998 at the Commonwealth Club, and I warned you, beware the government media complex. And just as other dictators have had their comedians to soften up the population for further assaults upon their freedoms, we also have that type of collaborator in this country today. Some of them are billionaires as a result of their collaboration. You just heard one. This is the Savage Nation. We're open for business. Let's go to some of the callers. WMAL, Jeremy. Go ahead, please, on what are you calling this last day of 2015? Uh, my favorite day of the year was when you called Bernie Sanders just like you saw him. Oh, you mean when I imitated his voice? Well, better than that, I mean, uh, if a Jewish person calls the way you see it, then you're not an anti-Semite for saying it. Well, I didn't call him anything about his religion. I just imitated his very heavy uh, uh, brogue. Well, either way, <laughs> socialism. All I did was all I did was imitate his brogue. I mean, that's not illegal, is it? All right, you listen. You get a free copy. I'm giving them away today. Everyone who gets up through uh, the call screen and gets a copy of Government Zero, stay on the line eight five five four seven two eight two W B O B Jim. Next up on the Savage Nation, uh, what's your comment? Michael, congratulations. Uh, happy New Year to you. I'd just like to oh, say... What do you mean? Congratulations on what? Surviving the tree chipper outside the window? <laughs> yeah. It, it's just started, by the way. I have three hours now to listen to a tree chipper outside of a home studio. Let me tell you something. Home studios are not what you may think they are. Everyone says, wow, I wish I could go work in my living room. Let me tell you something. There's a few drawbacks like the one I have today. Here I'm sitting in this beautiful house, and the illegals show up with a truck with a tree chipper. That's really comedic. Somebody up there loves me. What's on your mind? Okay, Michael, I, 
I want to talk about what I want in the new year for you. I think you can take one topic, whatever it is, uh, rally a certain number of calls. Let, let, let's just say 20 to 30 calls. Get a consensus. We can drill down even further. And I, I think you'll be really surprised. And I, I think you did a great job. Wait, wait well, explain to me what you mean by drill down. You mean stick to one topic? Well, you know, yeah, at least, at least for one hour, but you can try it for 30 minutes. But I, I don't, you, what you've got to do is, is basically have the callers top whatever they're, whatever they're pitching to you, see if we can top that, so to speak, almost a game. Well, I'm not so sure. Radio is about uh, audience interest. You stay on one topic too long, people are going to start turning the, the dial. They can't listen to it for much longer than if, honestly, the average listener will listen to a show like this for a certain number of minutes and then switch uh, uh, the dial. I have the longest ta uh, TSL in the business. I always have. My listeners have a longer attention span, but there's a limit to it. And the TSL is time spent listening. The last I checked, I have the longest TSL in the business because my listeners tend to want to get into a topic. But you can also do, you know, go go too far with that. What do you think is the worst thing Obama did in 2015? Uh, I would say not not screening uh, the, you know, as far as the TSA, not screening, uh, basically not screening immigrants coming in. Uh, what, what do you want to screen people? If you want to spread disease and terrorism, why would you screen them? You would you would screen them in their home country, and you get those who could cause most mayhem to come in and usher them into a nation that you hate. I mean, you're not thinking the way he does. I mean, if you hate a nation and you want to transform it, what you do is you bring in people who are sick. You know, I should do this whole show today on this. You want to talk about one show? I am a trained epidemiologist. If I read you the diseases that are being brought in, from immigrants, primarily from the Middle East and Mexico, your hair would stand up, what this government is covering up. If there was a just government, every leader in the CDC would be arrested for sedition for what they're doing. They have turned a blind eye to the diseases that this man is ushering into this nation. And I didn't want to get angry today at all. Did I break up yet? Did the clear one fail us yet? No, not yet. I'm keeping it down. All right, a copy of Government Zero goes out to you because this issue of immigrants and epidemics is very near and dear to my heart. I know an awful lot about it. Before I take my first break, I've been watching the Dubai skyscraper burning all morning. And now the liars are putting out the cover story that fireworks, fireworks burn the skyscraper. Well, if you believe that, well, then I guess you can believe that Barack Obama is an American who loves the country. Back in a minute. So the country is being overrun by illegal aliens from China, Mexico, from the Middle East, m Muslim men of military age, and the FBI offers $5,000 as a reward after w Bacon was found at a Vegas mosque. This is what, this is what we mean by the perversion of a, of a nation, the perversion of a government. I have talked about insanity before. I've told you that the chaos that Obama is creating is, of course, by design. You can call him insane if you want. It's what he's doing is insane. He tells Seinfeld many world leaders are insane, but he himself is a psychopath. What I'm, what I'm about to read to you shows the malice of this man towards this nation and uh, what a puppet he is of the Silicon Valley pirates. The pirates who run Microsoft, the pirates who run these companies in Silicon Valley who hate American workers so much that they're bringing in foreign graduates who are cheaper employees than U.S.-born college grads. And executive action passed today, passed today, will give work permits to foreign college graduates. 181-page illegal rule put out by the psychopath in the White House, will give work permits to foreign college graduates who will then compete against Americans for white-collar jobs, even though many many of you are, are college grads stuck in lower-wage positions and are struggling to pay off college debt. Your president is not your friend. Your president is your enemy. Many of you are young, you're idealistic. There's an old saying, 